everyone good evening i am dr vidvarsha today we will discuss about probiotics here we will discuss about the probiotic that particular strain that should be used in a gastrointestinal condition this topic is taken from our new article that is from espagen 2023 first we will see our common gastrointestinal condition that is acute gastroenteritis in acute gastroenteritis what all can be used that is it can be recommended to the patients first you can recommend the probiotic lactobacillus rhamnosus gg strain is gg okay at the dose of more than or equal to 10 to the power of 10 colony forming unit per day for about 5 to 7 days okay next you can also recommend saccharomyces boulardi at the dose of 250 to 750 mg per day for about 5 to 7 days you can also recommend lactobacillus uteri at the dose of 10 to the power of 8 to 4 into 10 to the power of 8 colony forming units per day for about 5 to 5 5 days fourth you can use the combination of lactobacillus rhamnosus and lactobacillus ruteri each containing 2 into 10 to the power of 8 colony forming unit okay first that each strain should contain 2 into 10 to the power of 8 colony forming unit okay it should be used for about 5 days so these can be recommended for the acute gastroenteritis that should not be recommended that should not be recommended for gastro intestinal acute gastroenteritis or combination of so you should not use the combination of lactobacillus helveticus with lactobacillus rhamnosus second you can you may not recommend bacillus clausi strains these are not recommended due to their lack of efficacy okay so we recommend lactobacillus rhamnosus or saccharomyces boulardii or lactobacillus ruteri or the combination of this lactobacillus rhamnosus with ruteri why because they can decrease the duration of hospital stay they can decrease the uh, duration of the diarrhea they can decrease the duration of the infection in the child so they are they all have a good efficacy okay next we'll go on with antibiotic associated diarrhea for antibiotic associated diarrhea what are the recommendations first high dose of more than or equal to 5 billion colony forming unit per day of saccharomyces boulardii or lactobacillus rhamnosus gg can be started simultaneously with the antibiotic treatment to prevent the antibiotic associated diarrhea in op setup and also in a hospitalized children so you can use a high dose of that is more than or equal to 5 million colony forming unit per day of 
Saccharomyces boulderi or the Lactobacillus rhamnosus GG strain or you can use the combination of both. These can be started simultaneously with antibiotics. This can be used for the children both in the OP setup and also in a hospitalized child. Okay, this is for antibiotic associated diarrhea. Next, we will see for nosocomial diarrhea. For nosocomial diarrhea, you can recommend, also we will see the recommendations. You can recommend lactobacillus, rhamnosus, GG strain of about 10 to the power of 9 colony forming unit per day for the duration of hospital stay. So lactobacillus rhamnosus strain GG can be used at the dose of 10 to the power of 9 colony forming unit for the uh, till the child stays in the hospital. What should not be used? It is that should not be recommended. That is lactobacillus ruteri. it cannot mean should not be recommended because of lack of efficacy okay this is for nosocomial diarrhea next we will see for NEC that is prevention of NNEC that is necrotizing enterocolitis. The use of probiotics in preterm child. The child, the baby should be vital, should be stable. Okay. Then only you can use the probiotics for that child. So what can be recommended? Because this uh, for NNEC prevention, this probiotics is a newer modality. So the recommendations. So you can use the lactobacillus rhamnosus gg or lactobacillus rhamnosus strain gg or you can use the combination of bifidobacterium infantis with streptococcus thermophilus. Bifidobacterium infantis with streptococcus thermophilus. Okay, this can be used for the prevention of NNEC in a preterm child. What should not be recommended? You should not use Saccharomyces boulardii and Bacillus brief the strain of BBG 001 is not recommended okay this is for prevention of necrotizing enterocolitis next we look for infant colic For infant colic, the recommendations are
first you can use lactobacillus ruteri for the breastfed child this can be used at the dose of 10 to the power of 8 colony forming unit per day for about 21 days lactobacillus ruteri can be used only in the breastfed infants at the dose of 10 to the power of 8 colony forming unit per day for about 21 days it is not uh, recommended for the use in a bottle fed uh, children because of lack of efficacy second you can use bacillus lactis with a strain of bb12 it can be used in the same dose as 10 to the power of 8 colony forming unit per day for about 21 to 28 days this is about infant colic this is this both are used only for the breastfed infants and not for the bottle fed infants for bottle fed infants still the recommendations have not come because of lack of efficacy next for h pylori infection For H. pylori infection, you can use Saccharomyces boulardii because it can increase along with the H. pylori treatment. So, it increases the eradication rate and decreases the GI adverse effect. It increases the eradication rate and decreases the GI adverse event. Next, we look for functional constipation. For functional constipation, there are no recommendations of probiotics. There are no recommendations of probiotics okay next for child with celiac disease even in celiac disease there is no recommendations are made for or against the use of probiotics so no recommendations are made for or against probiotics okay. so if they ask a question like probiotics in pediatrics you can write this because it is a newer guideline so kindly like share and subscribe